Jacob Zuma's medical parole is under scrutiny again. This time, the High Court in Pretoria has heard a challenge brought by the DA, Afri Forum, and the Helen Sussman Foundation to have the granting of the parole reviewed and set aside. Let's speak now to legal analyst Benedict Piri. Mr. Piri, good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time. So, by the time that a decision on this matter is concluded, the three months under which the former president was scheduled to serve his term in, in, in jail would have been up. Does the case not become moot? Um, it doesn't become moot, Kathy, because mm -hmm. a declaration of a government's action uh, that is legally invalid is always important to the question of the rule of law. So notwithstanding that the, what the judge orders may not send the former president back to prison because you know, the time may have elapsed, but it is important that the commissioner's conduct to the extent that it is found unlawful and to be set aside is actually declared as unlawful at, at, the, at, the, at the very least. So I think that is important from a rule of law perspective. Uh, which is really why this matter has been brought by the DA, the AFRI Forum, uh, as we heard in the submissions today. Mm. So the crux of the matter then is really about interrogating the integrity of the then uh, Commissioner of Correctional Services and how he came to this decision. That's absolutely correct. Um, and I think if we recall the DA's opening submissions, their counsel said this is really a simple matter of whether the commissioner firstly had the power to make the decision that he made and secondly had the requisite jurisdictional facts to make that particular decision that he made. And that's a simple question that goes to the integrity of the medical parole process. So I think as a decision, it's really important. We've had um, some decisions that go back to Shabir Sheikh and others that have really put this question of medical parole under scrutiny and I think it is important and it will be important that the court actually opines on what the former commissioner did and whether he was legally empowered to do that. Mm -hmm. When we look at what the possible outcomes of this court case might be and what it is that these organizations are asking the court to do, do you think that it will fundamentally change the approach of um, the medical parole board and perhaps even clarify in a lot more detail where the powers of somebody like the commissioner begin and end? Absolutely. Um, you know, what uh, the commissioner and the former president have sought to do is say that the construction of the act allows a discretion on the mm. part of the commissioner to determine medical parole, irrespective of what, what the medical parole advisory board does. I think that is a very important question to clarify and set clear, because on the reading of the act, and I think that the DA uh, Afri, Orum, Afri Forum and Helen Sussman Foundation actually argued correctly. I do not believe that the Act affords any discretion on the Commissioner to jettison or set, put aside um, a recommendation for the, from the advisory board. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an important principle to clarify. Uh, you know, we have a number of high profile cases coming um, and we don't want this to be a situation where these kind of things slip through the cracks again. And, and of course, one of the <clears throat> issues that has been raised is that often you find high profile individuals that seem to be the, key, the main be beneficiaries of this discretion and yet you have ordinary members of society who do find themselves um, behind bars for whatever reasons, whatever crimes they may have committed, and yet they don't enjoy the, the same benefit under that discretion. I, I think that's an absolutely important and critical point. And if we go back, um, Advocate Duplessis spoke about the history of the enactment of this new uh, uh, dispensation of this uh, Correctional Services Act and exactly that it was trying to deal with issues like that where a high profile person could just go under medical parole but mm -hmm. someone more deserving would not have the opportunity simply because uh, you know whoever was making that application was high profile and you know certain shortcuts would be taken in their favor. Benedict Piri is a legal analyst. We're going to leave it there for now.